OK, to discuss this issue in more detail, I'm joined by Health Minister Andrew Little in Wellington and Opposition Health Spokesperson Shane Reti in Whangare. Thanks very much to both of you for joining us on News Hub Late. Now, before we start, I want to play a clip from an interview we did on this programme about three weeks ago with the Nurses' Organisation. Take a listen. Uh, cutting to the chase, I guess, are patients' lives at risk here? Yes, they are. It's that simple. Um, when you have a very tired workforce that um, doesn't meet the standards that are required to actually give safe care, mistakes will be made. So, Minister Little, we've been warned. We've heard examples of people being made to wait 32 hours, other people leaving. What do you say to scared patients facing that situation right now? If anybody needs hospital level care, they should go to hospital. That is the place to go to. We know the, the system has been under pressure. It's been under pressure because we're still dealing with COVID. We've had a flu season that we knew would be great, but it has been greater uh, earlier than we expected. Um, and we've got doctors and GPs um, who people have not been able to get into. That's why it's great to see that County's Monaco District Health Board has um, put some effort into making sure that people can get access to GPs this weekend and next weekend. OK, so what else are you doing to fix this? Uh, well, uh, we've done a lot to, to um, pick up a health system that had been neglected for a long time. We've increased funding already by about 25%. We've had a record investment into the health system just in the, this year's budget. We've increased nursing roles in the health system in the time we've been in government by 4,000 roles. We have a lot of vacancies. We have vacancies in other um, uh, medical uh, positions as well, and we're doing everything we can to recruit into those roles. And we do have a primary care system that is also under pressure. It did, the whole health system has done a tremendous job for COVID, but it remains under pressure. But then we knew that this winter would be difficult, and that's why the hospitals have all been planning for a, a, a winter where they would be under pressure. Dr Reti, is that good enough? Look, I think the whole health system is under pressure and has been for many months, maybe even through back to last year. What we're needing here is we're needing to give the public some confidence that we've got this, that the safety net will be there when they need it. To do that, we need to support our healthcare workers. We need to have more of them. We need to let them know that they're valued. We need to give them conditions uh, that let them help us get the best outcomes we can possibly get. And I must admit, I'm, I'm seeing the effort is a bit thin at the moment. How many nurses short do you think? we are right now. Uh, there are reports of around about 4,000 nurses short, 3,000 in the hospital sector and 1,000 in the age residential care sector. It's a substantial shortage. OK, Minister Little, Australia is making some big plays right now. New South Wales is charging ahead on recruiting 10,000 nurses. Nurses here are telling us that they can get three times the pay in Oz, flights paid for, a sign-on bonus in some cases. What are we doing to compete with that? Yeah, they'll get three times the pay if they're prepared to work in the outback and be the, the sole nurse looking after a community of, of hundreds. Um, what we've done is we've increased nurse pay uh, up to now by 20% since the time we've been in government. We did another deal with the nurses at the end of last year that would put a nurse on with seven years' experience working full-time on a base salary of $95,000. We reached that agreement with the nurses' organisation. The nurses' organisation has since backed out of it. We're trying to get that back on track. We've started recruitment campaigns into specialist nursing positions, but particularly um, intensive care and critical care, as well as other recruitment campaigns into nursing. We've uh, set up a scheme to get former nurses back into nursing, particularly full-time roles. We've um, got about 200 uh, under that scheme this year um, and we are continuing to support people uh, to get into the politics and universities for their nurse training. We have about 8,000 people in nursing courses um, at the moment alone. We produce about 1,800 graduates a year. We're doing everything we can to fill those gaps. Is that enough, Dr Reti? No, it's not. We're not a welcoming international environment for nurses. We've still got a pay freeze, uh, the Safer Nursing Accord, which is a ratio no, of how that, many wrong, uh, patients to freeze. staff needs to be fully implemented increases. by June no, 20 okay, of last little, year. Hasn't go. been fully implemented hasn't been fully implemented and the immigration settings a week or so ago that green listed doctors to uh, immediate residency but two years for nurses. How do we explain that? How is that a welcoming environment? Mr. Minister Little, that's a good point. Should we fast track? 
Um, nurses are on the green list. They are fast tracked to get here. They have to work two years to get residency. Um, we have increased nurses' pay or negotiated pay increases for nurses twice since September last year, um, compared to uh, under the previous government where nurses' pay went backward in real terms. We're doing everything we can to create better conditions for nurses and to make nursing more attractive in a way that it's never been before. But I stand they do by have to wait for two years. Done. They do have to work here for two years before they are even eligible to apply for residency. Can't we move that forward? Um, we, we, we now have our immigra uh, immigration system allows more nurses to come in, um, uh, providing they have a, a job to come to, they will get in, they'll get a visa to work here, they work two years to residency. Um, that, that is, and they are on the green list, they are on the priority list to get here. Very quickly, Dr Riti, countries everywhere are grappling with these types of issues right now. I mean, realistically, how much can we control? Look, I think there are several things we can do. First of all, we can be a more welcoming international environment, as we're discussing. Secondly, we have doctors and nurses driving Uber Eats uh, in and around New Zealand. We need to figure out how to onboard them fully. And thirdly, we need to turn on our domestic pipeline to grow our own culturally competent homegrown doctors and nurses. Those are the three buckets we need to work on. OK, Opposition Health Spokesperson Shane Riti and Health Minister Andrew Little, thanks for your time to discuss this crucial issue this evening.